Hi, this is Bill from The Upside of Downsizing. What I have for you in this video is going to be a compilation of different updates, video clips, and other things that I have just not gotten around to posting. Think of it as a mixtape like you had back in high school when, cons when cassettes first came out and you had a mixtape for every occasion. This is going to be a mixtape of video clips from the Upside of Downsizing, from our air conditioning systems, from uh, our greenhouse update, and anything else I can find. Enjoy! You know, I used to work in a display department when I was had just graduated high school. And there was an older gentleman there, his name was Gino, and he was the painter. So anything that needed to be custom painted, this guy could do, regardless of what it was. And one of the things he did great was lettering. This guy was just an amazing artist who could, with absolute confidence, paint a sign like nothing I'd ever seen before. And just watching him made me realize you just have to have the confidence to go at it. And the old saying, he who hesitates is lost, is definitely uh, applicable when it comes to lettering. So watch, I'll screw it up now. What you're seeing right here is a window air conditioner that we installed yesterday. It's a 6,000 BTU unit that we got at a very good price. It uh, will hopefully keep the trailer cooler and it draws only 4.9 amps. So the installation was pretty straightforward even though it was a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a pain to get everything to fit just right. But basically it's three quarter inch plywood. Uh, first thing we did was remove the window, left the frame, and then fitted a piece of plywood three-quarter inch into the frame where the window was previously, cut a uh, hole for the window air conditioner to slide through from the inside toward the outside, and then if you can see it, there's an L bracket right there that is screwed to the air conditioner as well as to that piece of ply. It's actually bolted to that piece of plywood in three spots. Let's see if you can see it from here. 
And then this plywood is actually uh, screwed with sheet metal screws to the metal frame from the inside in six points. So it is absolutely solid as a rock. I thought I was going to have to make some sort of angle bracing underneath, but being a smaller unit, it weighs about 43 pounds, and uh, it's holding rather solid. So, of course, we have to paint the outside. Uh, I've caulked around the edge with an acrylic latex caulk that is paintable, so we can paint this plywood, and I think I'm going to end up getting some half to three-quarter inch uh, closed, uh, closed cell uh, styrofoam type insulation and cut it around here cut it around to fit and glue it to that wood but I'll paint it first see how it works as far as insulation is concerned the inside will also get painted and uh, then it'll actually be a rather nice installation again 4.9 amps it draws about 525 watts at full power as opposed to 1800 watts for our rooftop air conditioner. So this is going to be our solution to running air conditioning in the evenings and maybe even overnight depending on how our batteries are looking. So here's what it looks like from the inside and you can see the three bolts that I used to secure the wood to that L bracket that's on the outside. Inside here has been caulked around the air conditioner. This caulking was done on the outside, so we'll just paint this, put the valance back up, and it'll be a rather nice installation. Okay, so here's an update to our previous uh, video, which I have not yet published yet, about our automatic watering system. We had purchased a system from Amazon for about 22 bucks, and frankly, it didn't work. Okay, so we just tested the system, and there's a major flaw in it, and I think the flaw is that this system uses this micro-tubing, or whatever it's called, this very thin tube, to run the full length, starting right, right at the timer. And it's just not giving, and we have about 100 PSI. I even took off the water pressure regulator off of the spigot, and we have about 100 PSI coming out. So it runs along this micro tubing all the way along and we're good up until about this point right here, about two thirds of the way down the bale, the pressure just gives out. There's not enough pressure and the pressure, in fact, there's not enough pressure to, to run up the hose and around to these atomizers. So We've taken these atomizers off to see if any water drips out at all. None is coming out, which means that there's just, for some reason, there's not enough pressure to get it up there, which is surprising. But I think that what we're going to end up doing is getting some half-inch irrigation tube, getting a new adapter, and we're going to run the new adapter direct from the timer. This will be then half-inch tube running straight down the bales, up, and around and then what we'll do is use a small piercing tool pierce a hole put in a, uh, in a a small connector piece into the half inch to run then a short piece of micro tubing with then the bubblers and atomizers off of that and perhaps that will increase the water pressure we'll get back to you when we get this done and I contacted the seller and the seller immediately said we have got a new system an upgraded system and he sent it out to us for free. Here's the difference. The main hose on the old system was eighth inch micro tubing, which is like that. And that was the whole system was eighth inch micro tubing and it just didn't get enough pressure through the entire system to water everything. The new system has what looks like to be about a quarter inch hose and that quarter inch hose provides plenty of pressure for all the sprinkler heads as well as these misters up top. We just turned it on for the first time and we got soaking wet. We were so shocked at the amount of water coming out. <laughs> In fact, Yvonne's doing a wet t-shirt contest. Anyways, it is absolutely night and day. So. 
I'm going to leave a link in the description below to this new system because for 22 bucks, this thing is awesome. After our first system failure, I actually went to Home Depot and I bought Rainbird stuff. Now the hose is cheap. The hose is like nine bucks for 50 feet of it. But all the little connectors, that whole thing was sitting there probably ended up costing 60 bucks. And it's all going to get returned. Because this thing is awesome. Anyways, this is Bill and Yvonne from the Upside of Downsizing in the greenhouse, soaking wet, <laughs> saying, see you in the next video. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the mixed tape. If you have any questions about anything, um, let us know in the comment box below. And again, I cannot stress enough how excited we are with the greenhouse automatic watering system. This updated or upgraded version for 22 bucks is really uh, money well spent. And since Yvonne is going to be going to Germany for three weeks, it's going to take a lot of pressure off of me as far as keeping the garden watered. Anyways, thanks again for watching. We appreciate your support, and we'll see you in the next video.